we are. Now, let me see if I can share my screen. I'm going to go over A, B, C, D, the two different ways to get coverage. Um, since I can see you all right now, can you raise your hand? If Is everybody in the room on Medicare? Okay. That's 100%. So everybody is. Well, maybe I should say if you're not on Medicare, raise your hand. Okay, good. Everybody is. Because that's what I do. I always... Um, give information that's pertinent to, to the to my audience. So let's get started here. And bear with me one second while I while I get this started. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> so my name is Bonnie Dobbs. I own an insurance company called Medicare and Other Red Tape. Well, actually, it used to be called Medicare and Other Red Tape. I always say that by accident. Uh, they made me get the name Medicare out of it a few years back, which caused all kinds of problems on my end because I've been doing this for so long. Um, I was the Medicare expert that sat on all the panel discussions for the AJC for five years. And now for the past four years, they have asked me to write articles in the AJC's Aging in Atlanta Ask the Expert. My last article was just printed October the, the 6th in the Sunday issue, week before last. Um, also, I'm an author now. Um, the National Aging in Place Council uh, chose 20 experts across the country to write a book, and the name of the book is Aging in Place Conversations, what industry expert thinks, and I'm honored to have written the part on Medicare. So the first part of this is just going to be about ABCD, and then we're going to get into some things that's pertinent to you guys. But um, there's three times you're Medicare eligible if you're turning 65, if you're retiring after 65, or if you're under 65 and own disability. Now, Medicare has all these deadlines, and if you miss a deadline, you get a penalty, and ABCD is very confusing. So I'm going to try to go through this, even though it's going to be quickly, but give you guys a refresher course in what ABC is and what it does. So everybody knows what this is. This is your Medicare card. So we're going to start out with Part A. <clears throat> On your Medicare card, Part A beside it says hospital. And what part A does is it's your treatment for inpatient. So when you're in the hospital, in skilled nursing or hospice, okay, that is part A. So even though it says hospital, it covers you when you're sick and in the bed in these three different settings. How do you pay for it? Well, during your working years, once you've worked for 10 years, which is equivalent to 40 quarters, you pay FICA taxes. So when you become Medicare eligible, you have funded your Part A. So if anybody ever at, tells you Part A is free, oh, heck no, it is not. You paid for it, and it took you a long time to pay for it. It's just there's no more premium once you become Medicare eligible. Whoops, I went the wrong way. Part B, Part P is the opposite of Part A. Part A is inpatient, Part B is outpatient. And beside Part B, it says medical. It covers your doctor visits, medical supplies. So what that means is when you go to your doctor, whether it's in his office or in the hospital, what do you need? You need a Band-Aid, you need to be stitched up, you need brain surgery, uh, you need a biopsy. It's going to pay for your doctor his services and whatever he needs, medical uh, supplies he needs to perform it. This pays for blood, your diagnostic tests, that's things like MRIs, CAT scans, biopsies, physical speech, all your different therapies, durable medical equipment, <clears throat> and Part B drugs. Now, <clears throat> Part B drugs are totally different from Part A. D drugs. A Part B drug is one that your doctor or a nurse practitioner has to give you. So that is like an injection or an infusion, okay? Part D drugs is what you get at the pharmacy. That's your pills and ointments and creams, okay? 
So your Medicare Part B pays for those injections and, and um, infusions. So how do you pay for your Part B? Well, you are billed once you become Medicare eligible. So if you have started your Social Security, they will deduct it monthly from your Social Security. And this year, most everyone pays $174.70. If you are delaying Social Security, then they send you an invoice in the mail and you pay quarterly. So you're billed monthly or they're deducted, they deduct it monthly. If you've started your Social Security, if you're delaying it, then you are billed quarterly. So original Medicare, that's what you see on your Part A and Part B, I mean, uh, on your on Part A and Part B on your Medicare card, that pays 80%, but it leaves you owing the Part A deductible, the Part B deductible, and that other 20%. So we've talked about Part A. What is Part C? Part C is just another name for a Medicare Advantage plan. Now, Part C are Medicare Advantage plans. They are good anywhere you have an emergency. Otherwise, they are service area specific. Part D. Part D is a prescription drug plan, and they are available as a standalone plan if you have a Medicare supplement plan or if you have an Advantage plan, they're built right in or embedded into the Advantage plan. One thing oftentimes people don't know is these drug plans have a network of pharmacies. So when you get to when you get a chance to look at your card, you can call the 800 number on the back of the card to find out if you are going to a pharmacy that is in the network. Because if you're not, you could be paying more for your meds. A good example is tier one and two. Often, if you're going to, if you're staying in the network, you pay zero for those tiers one and two. But if you go out of the network, if you're going to a pharmacy they're not contracted with, you could be paying five, 10 or $20 for that same medication when if you were in network, you could get it at zero cost. So if you only own one or two meds, that may not be a big deal. But if you're on several, that could really, uh, you know, burn, burn a chunk and burn a hole in your pocketbook, right? <laughs> so we went over A, B, C, D, and I purposely tried to breeze through it because I'm sure you guys, for the most part, are aware what, what that is. But now let's go over the two different ways to get insurance coverage to cover what original Medicare doesn't. So oftentimes people don't know which way they or which coverage they actually have. If you have an Advantage plan, it will have something like HMO or PPO, PFFS, SNP, but the HMO and the PPO are the ones most popular. If you have a supplement plan, they go by letters. So on your card, it will say plan F, plan G, plan N, something like that. Just know also that a supplement plan is also known as the Medigap, okay? So Advantage plan, Look for HMO or PPO on your insurance card. If you have a supplement plan, it should say Plan F, G, or N. Those are the most popular ones. Whoops, sorry about that. Once again, Original Medicare pays 80%, and that lit the holes or the gaps that it leaves is that Part A deductible, Part B deductible, and other 20%. So, Let's talk about Medicare Advantage plans first, okay? And here are some of the characteristics of them. The plan decides your care instead of original Medicare. 
the plan me and the insurance company does. They do have a network of providers and they are service area specific. Now, please understand and it, an Advantage plan is not a supplement plan. Sometimes Advantage plans are referred to as managed care or replacement plans because they have these first three uh, rules that they decide your care. They do have a network of providers and they are service area specific. That's the not so fun things about Advantage plans. But there's an upside. Let's talk about the good Advantage plans. Usually a Medicare Advantage plan does not have any monthly premium, or if it does, it's fairly low. So I didn't do that purpose. But Medicare Advantage plans do have co-pays and co-insurance. So you pay as you go. So if you're not sick, then you're not out any, you have no money out of pocket. But if you are, you just pay whenever you use it. So Advantage plans most reflect the coverage that you had when it, during your working years, okay? Now, original Medicare, just your red and white blue card, okay, does not have a maximum out of pocket. Advantage plans do have a cap or a maximum out of pocket. Another good thing about Advantage plans is they have all of the benefits of Part A and Part B. Remember, we went over the hospital and the medical. And they also have usually have additional benefits like dental, vision, hearing, gym, over-the-counter, those type things. And all of these things make Advantage plans look attractive. So that's kind of the good and the bad about Advantage plans. So let's move on now and talk about a little bit more about Advantage plans or about the rules of Advantage plans. So if you look on your card and it has HMO for Health Maintenance Organization, just know the rule for your plan is you must use in-network doctors only okay, or you'll have to pay the entire bill unless you have a referral from your primary care doctor. So what that means is if your neighbor says, oh, I went to this great cardiologist, you can't call that cardiologist up and make an appointment. First, what you should always do is call the 800 number on the back of your card or go to the website and see if that provider is in the network, and then you would get a, a referral from your PCP. So for those of you who are on an HMO, it's really important that you understand this. You must stay in the network, use in-network providers, or you're gonna have to pay the entire bill unless your PCP provides a referral. Now, for those of you who are on a PPO, okay, you're going to pay less if you stay in the network, but a PPO does give you the flexibility to go out of the network. Now, most of the companies have a higher copay if you go out of the network, not all of them. So if you're on a PPO, look and see what your in-network will cost and what your out-of-network cost will be. In SMP, those are duals, meaning that the client is both on Medicare and Medicaid. There's certain uh, plans that was created just for that segment of the population, and they have, they're more benefit-rich. They give them like more money for dental and maybe food cards and transportation, uh, so many trips to go back and forth to the doctor. If you guys happen to know somebody who is less fortunate than you that is on both Medicare and Medicaid, you can have them give my office a call because oftentimes uh, those, those people don't find out 
that they do qualify for more benefits because not all agents are uh, familiar or educated with all of the different Medicare programs as I am. Now, a PFFS is private fee-for-service. These plans may or may not include the Part D, and you can only go to providers that agree to accept the terms of the plan, including payment, and you must confirm this at every appointment. So, mostly this is for people that live in extremely rural Georgia, you know, you guys are still close enough to the metro area that probably few, few people are ever put on a PFFS plan because there's usually plans that are more benefit rich. So once again, when you get back, if you're not sure if you're on an advantage or a supplement, or you know you're on an advantage, but you're not sure which one, please look this over, okay, and know the rules because my whole goal in life <clears throat> is to help everybody save money on their cost. Now that we've talked about Advantage plans, <clears throat> let's talk about Medicare supplement plans. And once again, those are known as Medigap plans. So the good news is there's no network, which means you can go to any provider that accepts Medicare. And that plan moves with you. So it doesn't matter if you buy it and you're living in Georgia and you decide to move to the beach or you decide to move to California or New York, okay? With a Medicare supplement plan, all you do when you move is you call and give them your new address. So a Medicare supplement plan can be a one and done unless the the, um, the monthly premium gets so much you, that you can't handle it or you would like to compare other carriers to see if you can get a lower plan. So not having a network that is most beneficial. I had a client who needed a hip replacement. He waited until he became Medicare eligible. And he told me, he said, I want to supplement because I want to go to the Mayo Clinic and get my hip replaced. He had family that lived near there. And I was like, you can, they're not going to pay for your travel expenses, but they're going to pay for your medical, just as if you were using your neighborhood hospital. The other thing about a Medicare supplement plan is there is no referrals. So if you need to go see your dermatologist or your uh, cardiologist, you just call them up and make an appointment. You do not have to go through your PCP. Now, the downside is they do have a monthly premium and they may have a, a deductible. If you became Medicare eligible before January 1st of 2020, you can get, get on a, a plan F and you can still you can still get on one to, until this day, okay? But if you became Medicare eligible, after January 1, 2020, then a plan G is the most comprehensive. And then there's also a plan N. Um, and of course, whenever you, you're paying less for the monthly premium, you've got a little bit more skin in the game whenever you use it, okay? But supplement plans provide you more flexibility because they go by the rules of original Medicare, meaning if your doctor says you need a knee replacement or whatever, then you get it. With an Advantage plan, there are prior authorizations. And so those are the ones that people seem to have more of a problem with. Not everybody, but those are the ones that, that you usually read about. Uh, if there's a negative uh, comment, that's what they're talking about as rule. So... This chart, I think, will help pull this whole thing together for you and help you really understand the difference. So everything in the blue column is Medicare, whoops, Medicare supplement, and everything in the red column is Medicare Advantage. So for doctors and hospitals with the supplement plan, you can select any doctor or hospital. The only thing is they must accept Medicare. 
with the Advantage plans, you may be required to use doctors and hospitals in the na in the network. If you're on an HMO, you definitely will have to. If you have a PPO, you can go outside the network, but you're probably going to pay more. Referrals. You can see any specialist without a referral. Referrals. Uh, you may need a referral. You will if you're if you have an HMO, okay, in order to go see a specialist. N uh, network. There's no network restrictions with a supplement plan. The coverage goes with you anywhere. So if you decide to wherever you decide to move, okay, you just call them up and give them your address. You never have to change that plan again. Uh, advantage plans are different. They do have network uh, restrictions. However, like I said in the very beginning, please know that emergency care is covered anywhere in the United States. So if you have an advantage plan and you go on vacation or go visit someone and there is an emergency, you go to the hospital or urgent care and it's going to be the same copay as if you were in your network. Enrolling, you can apply for a Medicare supplement insurance plan anytime after you turn 65. The only thing is you must have your Part A and, B, uh, and join Part B. With Advantage plans, they are, they are specific periods each year, and we're in the middle of one of them right now. Annual enrollment, which is October the 15th to December the 7th every year. And because there's so many changes this year, for all, your, uh, all you procrastinators out there, please call and get your appointment. Get on the calendar now. Cost. With a supplement plan, you will have a monthly premium. You have to pay your Part B premium also. However, your out-of-pocket costs are very limited. So a supplement plan really helps you create a budget of what you're going to spend on health care because of uh, you have the monthly premium and then your only other out-of-pocket uh, cost is your the your annual deductible that's for a plan g now advantage plans generally you're not going to have a monthly premium if you do it's going to be a low one you always have to have your part b whether you're in a supplement or an advantage but you pay co-pays and co-insurance and deductibles as you go with the advantage with the supplement plan it does not include the drug plan, so you have to purchase a Part D. And I hate all these things where it says, consider also purchasing Part D. Or if you go to Medicare website, it says, uh, how do they word? They always word it the, the, the same way. You may want to, to uh, enroll in a Part D. They don't, they don't tell you. If you don't enroll in a Part D, you're going to get a lifelong penalty. I think they say you may have the option to enroll in a Part D, but whatever they, I'm not exactly sure how it's worded, but it leaves you thinking, oh, this is optional. I don't have to. Well, it is true. It is optional. You don't have to. But what they never put out there uh, following that is you will get a lifelong penalty if you don't enroll uh, on time. A prescription drug plan is included in most of the Advantage plans are embedded right into it. So I hope the previous slides along with this one helps kind of pull all of this information together so you have a better understanding of A, B, C, D and the two different ways to get coverage. So let's talk a little bit about when to enroll, what those magic dates are so you don't get a penalty. Uh, if everybody's in here on Medicare, you know that you have seven month period when you're turning 65. That's three months before your birthday month and three days, I'm sorry, three months afterwards. 
And right now is annual enrollment. That's every year, October the 15th to December the 7th. But there's special enrollment periods and times when you can change your plan and you have to change your plan or you'll get a lifelong penalty. And one of those times is when you move. So most people are either on a supplement, oh, excuse me, erase that from your thought. Most people are either on an advantage plan or on a standalone drug plan. If you move, if you move, just know these plans may be um, offered by the federal government and you'd think that they would go with you, but they don't. They differ not only state to state, but county to county. So for those of you who either are on an advantage plan or have a standalone drug plan, <clears throat> if you move, you need to call a broker. That's somebody who's contracted with all these different plans and they can research and compare your plan with all the plans that's available in your new area. The other thing most people don't know, and this is really important to people that are on Advantage plans. If you go into skilled nursing or to into a nursing home and you're on an advantage plan, well, first of all, you're probably not having a good day, right? So something has changed. Probably a lot has changed. So you do have an opportunity when you go into a nursing home to change your advantage plan. And then Whenever you're released and it's time to go home or wherever you may be moving to, you have another opportunity to change your advantage plan because if something so severe has happened that you're in skilled nursing or nursing home, uh, probably your doctors have changed, your uh, medications have changed, uh, your general health may have been affected. So it's really important to have your plan reviewed whenever you're in a nursing home or once you have been released, okay? And then, of course, everybody doesn't retire during annual enrollment nor become Medicaid eligible. So whenever you're retiring, you have a two-month window to enroll. And when you become Medicaid eligible, you can... Um, you can enroll immediately. And those that are Medicaid, they also have to be Medicare and Medicaid eligible for us to help them. Now, I call this general enrollment period the oops, <laughs> because this is for people that forgot to enroll when they first became Medicare eligible. I mean, it happens all the time. People will call my office and go, I am healthy. I don't take any medications and I didn't enroll and now I'm ready to enroll. Well, there's a penalty if you don't enroll on time. And then the federal government punishes you by saying, we only have a window of time that we're going to allow you to enroll because this is your fault. You're supposed to know. However, you guys know as well as I do, there's not like some document written somewhere where it's got all of these rules in simple understanding order. So if you forgot to enroll whenever you first became Medicare eligible, then you have to wait to until January 1 to March 31st. So that means that you get to accrue that penalty until you get to those dates. Open enrollment. Once again, this is for people on Medicare Advantage plans only. That's also January the 1st to March 31st. So if you're on an Advantage plan, say you choose one during annual enrollment, which is now, okay, but say February or March, you realize you don't like the plan for whatever reason, or maybe your needs have changed, you do have a one-time opportunity to switch to another Advantage plan, or you can drop your Advantage plan and enroll in a Part D. Now, if you're going to do that, if you're going to do that, you got to think this thing through because if you're going to drop your Advantage plan, 
you have to make sure that you're going to medically qualify for a supplement plan and enroll in Part D. Otherwise, if you don't medically qualify, you could find yourself without any medical uh, insurance. So I would definitely get a um, get an agent, a, a broker involved in helping with that. Now, I know all of these don't apply, every single one of these don't apply to everybody in there, but everybody in there at one time or the other, one of these is going to apply to you. So you can just remember the one that uh, that may be coming up on your plate soon. First, we're going to talk about high income. Then we'll talk about low income. So what is IRMA? IRMA stands for Income Related Monthly Adjustment Amount. That is a mouthful. <laughs> And for this year, for 2020, whoops, for 2024, there's always a two-year look back. And they look at your MAGI, your Modified Adjusted Gross Income, on your 2022 taxes. So if you're single and you make up to 103000 or married, file, and joint, and you make up to 206000 your Part B will be one seventy four seventy. Now. If you are blessed and your income exceeds those thresholds, there is an escalating scale up to $750,000 and over. So I have some people that pay, that make like a million dollars a year. So they're paying in the neighborhood of over $500 a month for their Part B. Now, the flip side of that coin is low income. So they have something called extra help, which is also known as low income subsidy. So if you're only making like up to maybe $1,800, your drugs are offered at a reduced rate. And then Medicaid is for individuals who make around $1,200 or less. And then they, the Medicaid, the federal and the state will then help pay for your Part B, your Part D, uh, drugs, your medical care, and food assistance. This is something that um, they started offering literally just a few years ago since I've been up there, actually. Um, now there are Advantage plans that offer VA uh, benefits. So with these Advantage plans, what they do is they offer additional benefits, like maybe some dental vision, some hearing, gym, whatever. But many of them have a Part B buy down. So, you know how um, we just talked about Part B is one seventy four seventy for the average American. These VA plans with the Part B give back or buy down maybe a hundred dollars so should that be the case instead of them deducting 174.70 if your give back is 100 dollars, they would only deduct 74.70 so they're not going to be sending you a check for a hundred dollars each month but they will deduct a hundred dollars less from your part b so that's like putting $500 in your pocket. Okay. Um, once again, not all agents know about the, uh, about this particular plan, but you can contact us if you're interested in that. Now I have a couple of questions that I have, uh, that I have asked, and then I'm going to go over what's new for next year. And then we're going to answer, answer your questions. So this the reason I wrote this is because two or three years ago, if you live in Atlanta, I'm sure you remember this, our three major hospitals, um, Wellstar, Northside, and Piedmont, all went out of network with a different Medicare insurance company. So Piedmont was out of network, I think, with Blue Cross Blue Shield, Northside was out of network, I think, with Aetna and Wealth 
HR was out of network with United Healthcare. So if what happens if you're on an advantage plan and your provider goes out of network? Well, if you had were on an HMO and you went, you would have to pay the full cost. If you were on a PPO, you would have to pay higher for out of network if they would accept you. And when your provider goes out of the network, that does not allow you a special election period to change plans. So what that means is for those folks that were on HMOs, if your hospital or provider went out of the network, you would have to pay the whole cost, okay? And it does, the thing about it is Medicare plans run January 1 to December 31st each year. Well, these provider contracts could be up anytime. So say you're with a provider and his contract comes up in May and he and the insurance company, or I mean, not the insurance company, but the provide, yeah, the provider and the insurance company sit down to the negotiation table and they can't come up with something that both sides feel is fair. So they go out and network while they're fighting back and forth. Okay. Meanwhile, you're out there going, oh my gosh. Okay. So this, um, once again, this is a reason why if you're on an HMO or a PPO, I want you guys to understand the rules, okay? And also, it's just as important to understand the rules of when to enroll at the different times. So there are some big, big changes coming up for uh, 2025 because of the Inflation Reduction Act. So once again, I'm going to go over the good, then we're going to go over the bad, <laughs> okay? Um, yay, the donut hole is finally being eliminated so we can just wave and say goodbye to it. They have been telling agents since 2018, that's when uh, I first started telling everybody on the panel discussions with the AJC, they're getting rid of the donut hole. Well. They still have it, but actually in 2025, it is going away once and for all. The other good news is there will be a $2,000 cap or maximum out of pocket on medications. Now, this has got to be wonderful and exciting news to those of you who have been paying thousands of dollars for your medications. I mean, this year, you could actually pay up to eight thousand dollars out of pocket for your medication so next year that two thousand dollar cap is going to be a big welcome to lots of folks there's about one percent of the american population that fall into that category the other good news is now you're going to be able to choose to make monthly payments instead of paying that high deductible every year whenever you go get your first bill at the pharmacy. So instead of doing that, they can um, divide the cost out and you can make monthly payments. Now, those monthly payments may change two reasons. Number one, if your doctor reduces the amount of meds that you're on, or if the doctor increases the amount of meds that you're on. So people that um, are not on any medications, or if you're only on tier one and two, don't worry about it because you're not going to be exposed. Well, I don't know. There are some plans where the tier two has a deductible. But for the most part, all of you who are on tier one and two, you don't have to worry about this because if you're not um, having to pay the deductible, this does not matter because your co-pays are going to be so low. Just do what do what you've been doing in the past. But for those people who are on expensive meds or tier three, four, and five, then you'll probably definitely want to move to the monthly uh, payment plan. 
Now, of course, we're talking about drugs here. So the cost here is just for the drugs. It doesn't have anything to do with the maximum amount of pocket for the medical uh, on the Advantage plans. So I hope you have a better understanding of, of that now. But um, a couple more things here before I open to, to Q&A. Who are these people who call me and say they work for Medicare? Well, guess what? They're scammers, okay? Because Medicare, Social Security, and the IRS will never call you, okay? If they need to contact you, they are going to send you a letter in the mail. So if somebody calls you up, they're trying to do one or two things. They're either trying to change your plan or they use it as a means of stealing your identity. I just had this happen to one of my clients this year. Somebody called them up, said, oh, I've got this wonderful plan for you. They must have made up a bunch of garbage. You have to give all of your information to enroll in a plan. This guy did, and it was just a ploy to steal, steal, their, to steal his identity. So, guys, don't call a number you see on TV. Don't answer your phone. Don't respond to email or snail mail. If somebody calls you, they're going to leave you a message. If not, they're trying to sell you something, right? So don't, don't fall for that and don't get caught up with any of these scammers. Now, what's new for 2025? This is the sad part. Um, I'm more unhappy about what's going on with Medicare this year than ever. And I've been doing this for 14 years. So we're going to start with drug plans first. If you're on a drug plan and you are happy with it and you don't do anything, your drug plan will just roll over. So for those of you who are on well care, okay, it's 50 cents a month this year. It'll be zero next year. But I promise you there's an ulterior motive what they're doing, which will come the following year. But if you're on well care, you probably will just let your plan roll over unless your meds have changed, okay? As long as your meds are tier one and two and you're not paying very much out of pocket, that's good. But any other plan, okay, you're going to have to go to Medicare.gov or call 1-800-MEDICARE. Agents do not have access to all the plans. We do not have access to, write, well, the plans we don't have access to, we can't compare, we can't write you on a plan. So if you call my office about a drug plan, we cannot help you because we don't have the, um, we don't have it available to us to research all the plans available to you. So go to Medicare.gov or call 1-800-MEDICARE. And uh, I already have um, feedback from that where people are on hold for 70 minutes or longer and some they're just hanging up. Or when they go to Medicare.gov, half the time the site's down. Um, this is in um, conjunction with the uh, Inflation Reduction Act. So remember I told you earlier how this year you could pay up to $8,000 out of pocket for your drugs. And starting in 2025, it's going down to $2,000. Well, that $6,000 spread, somebody's eating it, and it's you, and it's me, okay? So what they're doing is they are eliminating agents from writing drug plans on certain with certain companies. Not all of them, but certain companies. The plans that we can write for, the companies we can write for, the majority of them are only allowing us to write one or two, one or two of their plans. So if I thought their third plan was the best plan for you, I can't even write you on it. So if I can't compare all the plans, I, I, I can't do a good job for you. I am so unhappy. I am so unhappy about this. And I feel really sorry because um, our age group, because I'm I'm one of you guys, okay, there's so many seniors, they don't have a computer. They never caught on to the tech thing. They don't know how to go to medicare.gov. They don't know how to navigate this. 
I don't know what they're going to do with people in nursing homes that don't have people to help help them. I was on the phone doing a Zoom just like this with a group in Florida. And so some of the people that work at that senior living community has um they're donating their time to trying to help these people. It's it's pitiful. It it breaks my heart. It makes me angry. I'm just I'm very unhappy with this. The other thing, for those of you who are on Advantage plans, several Advantage plans are exiting, not the company, not the company, but the plans themselves. If you receive a termination letter, you're going to have to change plans. The three major companies that's doing that is Humana, Aetna, actually Aetna is the biggest one. Aetna is the biggest one in this area. We we cover 15 states, so there's other states where um, it differs. But in this area, Aetna, Humana, and United. United has the least, but they do have some. With the turmoil and nightmare that our mail has been in, not everybody is going to receive their termination letter. So. Call the 800 number on the back of your card if you have one of those three cards and ask, is your plan terminating? Because if it is, you need to change plans. Now, note, the insurance company is not going out of business. It's just they are um, terminating some of these plans. And of course, the ones that they're terminating are the ones that you're probably on. If you're on one of those plans, just know those plans are more benefit rich, okay? Meaning your benefits are higher and your co-pays are lower and they're going to reverse that. They're going to decrease your benefits and increase your co-pays. Now, the lining on that is, uh, or another, well, let's talk about this before we go there. Something else that literally happened last night that I, I only found out about this morning, I, and I've been so busy today going from one call to the next, or this is the second Zoom I've done today, um, is Blue Cross Blue Shield or Anthem of Georgia, okay? And, and, and I have, haven't even had a chance to research other states. It's just somebody personally told me about this because one of my agents was trying to enroll somebody. Anthem of Georgia has decided that agents must go to people's homes or meet them in person and write a paper application, upload it, send it to the send it to Blue Cross Blue Shield or Anthem, whatever they want to call themselves, because it it uh, they call themselves both. Anyway, there's no way, there is no way any agent who has any type of success has the time to drive from one house to another. During COVID, most everybody became a proficient with te enough technology that somebody can send you an email, they can do the research, they send you the, the plan and you go over it and you enroll. OK, but now none of my agents, my agents are busy. None of my agents, as far as I know, have the time if you're on an Anthem plan to drive to your house and come back to their office and upload the enrollment. So this is the next part that I really don't like. So now the only alternative that you have on that is to, if you want to, if you really want to be in an uh, Anthem plan, okay, is you're going to have to call them. Well, guess what? When you call Anthem, they can only research the plans that they offer. So how are you supposed to know if maybe Aetna has a better plan or United or who, it doesn't matter. But when you call a company direct, they can only compare the plans that's in their portfolio. So shame on them for doing that because I heard that they were going to have some pretty darn good plans this year. The only good thing I see out of this is if you receive a termination letter, this gives you an opportunity to get a supplement plan 
with no medical underwriting. This is so, so big. Every year I have people call my office and they started out on a vantage plan and now they get diagnosed with something and they've got all these expensive medical bills and they were having to pay a copay for each one and they want to get on a supplement plan, but they don't medically qualify. But if you receive a termination letter or you find out your plan is going to terminate, you can call the 800 number on the back of the card, make sure they send you a termination letter and that is your golden ticket to get into a supplement plan with no medical underwriting. And then I'm going to leave you guys with this before I open it up to Q&A. Every year during the month of September, you get something in the mail called the annual notice of change. And usually it'll have a knock written really big on the top of it. Your annual notice of change is if you have an Advantage plan or a standalone drug plan. And what this does is it compares the plan you're on with this year and what it's gonna look like for next year. And it goes down line item by line item. It starts with the premium if there is one, the deductibles, then your co-pays, and you can compare the plan your own with what next year is gonna look like. And if you like your plan and you do nothing, your plan will just roll over. But if your co-pays have gone out of sight, you're not, you're not getting the, the benefits that you need. And then you would need to contact a broker and change plans. So um, to recap really quick here, every year during the month of September, read your annual notice of coverage going forward. If you're on a drug plan or an Advantage plan and you don't do anything, those plans will just roll over. If you need a drug plan, you can or you want to change your drug plan, you can go to Medicare.gov or call 1-800-MEDICARE. Some Advantage plans, I need to put the word Advantage there. Some Advantage plans are exiting the program and will not be available next year for those of you who are on an Advantage plan, if you've received the termination letter, then you've got to change. If you're not sure, call the 800 number because I'm, I'm not sure everybody's going to get a termination letter, okay? if you, This will be your opportunity to go to another Advantage plan or you will get a guaranteed issue if you want to switch and go to a supplement plan. If you guys need help, you can give my office a call and I would call soon because Everybody I know that's in this business is they're buried right now. So I'm sorry, I don't have better news because um, I kind of like to laugh and, and joke around, but this this year it's very somber what's happening. But I would like to open it to Q&A. So what questions do you guys have? Before we, uh, let me just point out that we've got two microphone runners and uh, Bonnie will not be able to hear your question unless you use a microphone. So please raise your hand if you have a question, and Bonnie will uh, take it from there. Hi, Bonnie. You had said uh, earlier when you were discussing the uh, $2,000 maximum out of pocket for 2025. Yes. Um, you said that what is counts towards that 2000 are all your out of pocket expenses. And then you said something else that it does not or does include and something else. And I missed that next phrase. Okay, so uh, I was talking about medications only, okay? Right. So it doesn't matter which plan you get, okay? I'm talking about drugs only now. It doesn't matter which plan you get, whether it's in an Advantage plan or a standalone drug plan, the most you'll pay out of pocket in 2025 for medications is $2,000. Now, some of these plans have a deductible. So, you know, if your medications uh, are tier three, four, and five, you'll have to pay the full cost of the drug until you meet that deductible. But after you've met the deductible, if it's applicable, okay, then the most you'll pay is $2,000 for your medications for the year. 
That's a good question. And just, uh, I, thank you for asking that so I can clarify it for you. I have one last question. Does the deductible count towards the $2,000? The deductible doesn't count, neither does the uh, monthly premium if you're if it's a standalone drug plan, just the co-pays for the medication themselves. Okay, so the deductible is not considered as part of no. your cost of the medication. No. Okay. That's disgusting because the deductible is so high. It's five hundred forty-five dollars this year, and next year they're bumping it up to five hundred and ninety dollars. So not all the companies charge the maximum amount that they're allowed to. Some of them charge, uh, I, I saw a couple of, was 420 and another one was four, 495, I think. But um, they are allowed to charge up to $590 for 2025. Wow, other questions? So you all are ready for the test? No other question? Well, I tell you what, it was like getting a, uh, a program from uh, the proverbial fire hose, wasn't it? No other questions. Okay. All right. Well, I went down front here before we... With the supplemental plans, who are the most secure companies offering supplemental supplemental plans in the Gainesville market? Um, they all have insurance behind them, so I, I don't know of any of them that are bad. The only thing with supplement plans that you need to consider when writing them, I mean, whenever purchasing one, be, is first of all, the coverage is the same. A plan G is a plan G, whether you get it from company ABC or XYZ, okay? So it's just the things you want to look out for is find out which company, uh, look at their, their past annual increases and see, see if they have a track record, okay? Okay, thank you. Sure, absolutely. What are the major reasons that different companies charge different premiums for the standalone uh, drug coverages? What are the factors? I, I wish I knew. I really wish I knew because you're right. Those premiums are all over the place. Um, the, the, the reason why the one company is charging like almost nothing or like they're literally charging nothing at all, uh, they were purchased by a larger company that's very prominent in the uh, Western United States, okay? Most people in the, uh, in the South or even on the Eastern side of the United States are not familiar with them, but they purchased this company. So this year, the monthly premium is almost nothing. Next year, it will be nothing. Then I have heard that they are going to call everybody and start really putting the press on everybody saying, we offer Medicare Advantage plan and you get you know dental vision and hearing and you won't have that monthly premium and they're gonna, that's their goal is, uh, is market share. So they are spending a couple of years um, undercutting everybody, everybody in the nation because they're in all 50 states plus uh, DC. So they're, you know, I know too much about some of the back end of the stuff because I read everything that I possibly can. And because I write articles for the AJC, I want to stay on top of everything. But that's what that's a big picture with uh, with that. But for the other companies, the reason why a company would charge forty one dollars versus a uh, hundred dollars, some of it has to do with um, formulary. OK, so the ones that have the higher cost. Okay, they're going to have a more rich formulary. They're going to have medications in them that the lower cost um, plans do not have. That's that's about the only the only thing that uh, that I know about you know about what's the big deal in the different cost. Okay, we have uh, time for one more yeah. question. Um, Edna is my secondary. What? You said sec uh, Aetna was going to uh, change? What was that again? If you have an Aetna Advantage plan, 
they have certain plans that's going to be exiting the program, they will be replaced with new plans. But the plan, if you're on an Aetna Advantage plan, okay, it's probably very benefit rich and your co-pays are low. They're going to flip flop that. They're going to uh, terminate the plan that you're currently on, and then they will charge more cut for your co-pays and your benefits will be reduced. Okay. So you could, <clears throat> the if other you question. haven't received a termination letter, you can call the 800 number on the back of your card and find out if your specific plan is going to be exiting, okay? Okay. All right, the other question I have has to do with the uh, veterans, um, uh, $100 deduction, what was that on? Yeah, there are certain plans that that are created specifically for veterans. I was just using $100 because it's a whole number and easy to follow. Um, so there, there are plans if you are a veteran, so you don't have to pay that entire $174.70, okay? Um, if you're interested in one of those, you can give my office a call and we'll assign you an agent and, and help you get enrolled. Okay. okay, thank you. All right, sure. well, Bonnie, thank you so much. We're right up against five o'clock. And uh, the most important number up on that screen is her phone number. Can we put so, it on, on the link? It, Why don't we add it on the link? It, it, well, we'll put it on the link. I'll make, it a, make sure it's available. And uh, so let's thank Bonnie for a great presentation for this afternoon. Did you guys learn something? Did you guys learn something? Yes. <laughs> I think so. I think so. <laughs> great. Um, in, in, in leaving, uh, I'd like to say thank you, Augie. And you guys just remember that um, sunshine is the best medicine and it doesn't have a $35 copay. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Bonnie. Take care. Okay, bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.